welcome. Some years ago I presented already my electronic x-axis spindle control which I have mounted to my Hobbymart Universal. This uh, Zaupel SD300 Hobbymart Universal is actually from 1993. So from the time after the fall of the Berlin Wall Earlier models of these were built in the German De Democratic Republic and this one was built even after the reunification of Germany at that time. So I guess uh, there are many machines like this still around and uh, I guess uh, that's also the reason why I keep on getting requests on the electronic x-axis control. So the x-axis control is actually built up on uh, an Atmel 8-bit controller. Um, so it was hand-built and uh, not based on an Arduino board or something like this at that time. Software was developed by myself then for this purpose. So there is no kit available but still the functionality which was implemented at that time has really proven to be very helpful in the use of the late. Also this functionality might be different to the ones which you would implement on other machines and the main reason for this is that this uh, special kind of late has no disengageable um, x-axis so you don't have a half knot or similar so you can't disengage it and um, so it's very tedious to move the x-axis manually because you either have to crank the the wheel uh, manually so this one here which uh, really takes time or you have to engage and disengage the um, control of the x-axis with a lever which is normally pushing out or coming out of the machine here and uh, you have to reverse the um, um, speed or the spindle to move the x-axis and forth and back always at the same speed if you don't want to move then the um, um, or change the uh, transmission actually so this always takes quite a lot of time and that was the main reason why I decided to uh, develop such an electronic control of the x-axis which actually drives the x-axis directly with a relatively strong stepper motor here and by this you have uh, 200 steps per rotation of the x-axis the x-axis has one millimeter shift per rotation so uh, a two hundredths of a millimeter is actually the uh, uh, the exactness of the um, positioning which you can reach with this, which has proven to be very much uh, okay. And uh, especially the control has two speeds available, which we can control here with the left knob and the right knob. So you can move it to the um, the carriage to the left and right with the one speed or with the other speed which gives you the possibility to do some work with a lower speed and move back at a higher speed quite easily with the system. Um, the system also has one negative side and the point is really that there is no uh, link established between the spindle and the x-axis any longer so you lose actually the ability to do thread cutting um, since everything is reversible on uh, what was done to the machine and there are also really only minor changes in the setup it's always possible to uh, put in the original gears uh, again and do thread cutting in the normal setup so with respect to the modification on the machines, you can see that actually the lever and the control for the gearing was removed here and a direct link between the stepper motor which has 4 newton meter as a, um, a torque 
uh, and the direct link to the x-axis is established here. So the control itself has some keyboard functionality here, the two speed controls and the display. So what we see here is actually the speed which is controlled on the left side and you can set up the speed here and I kept on using a slow speed on the left one and a faster speed here on the right one which can be used here. The current position which is starting at zero here and the system is idle so by enabling it we see here that it is enabled and we also hear the noise of the control now and the very basic functionality is now to move the x-axis by pressing here the left and right button we see slow speed and you see also that the position is updated here here you see the current speed which is then accelerated. You see this is the fast speed and the slow speed, uh, the turn back to left. So then we have here four rows for which we store here four up to four positions. At the moment we see the position zero is stored here and if we press this button here this links to the slow speed and that right one to the fast speed to be able to return to the position which is stored here. So by pressing this see that the position goes to the zero position at the high speed and if we go to a different position and press the left one it goes to the zero position with the slow speed. Moreover, we can go to any kind of a position and zero the thing out by pressing a long press on the zero button. So now we have a new zero position. To do some exact work, we can go to the menu and set a position. So, and by this we can enter, let's say, 50 as the one position and say 75.269 as the second position and we have these two numbers now here and so since this is the position 0, position 1, we can go now to position 75.268. And from here we can also go to position 50 back. So that's the base functionality. And with this we can go then to cut some grooves or whatever we want on the lathe and we can manually control it always and keep on repeating to get some things. One last feature which we have is when we are in a good position which we have reached due to something we can do a long press here on the store and the current position is taking over, taking over into the memory for the row for which we use this. So by this we can change now between the different positions. Which is actually the most used functionality. So you cut to some position using the normal controls here, the left and right one. And you store then a position, go back to something and go on cutting. You control the y-axis manually and that's what you want to do. So a typical application where it is useful to have uh, the electronic control and to be able to store the positions is a situation like this. 
where you want to cut actually very near to the chuck and on the other hand you also want to really go from point zero from the end of your workpiece here and I uh, only want to take off around a tenth or maybe two tenths from this rod but still I want to do it on the complete length so what we can see here is now that we are able first of all to control the exact position of the x-axis we come near to our chuck so we know now we are in a good position and now I will actually zero out my position here store the zero position come back to the workpiece go to the right and see that we are here now in a very good position to start the cut also here I will be storing this position now and that's already everything that we have to do we can now start to do the cutting and let's wait to see how the machine is doing it thing I want to do is actually I want to cut a groove here into this material of a width of approximately 11.5 uh, millimeter so the width of the tip of my cutting tool is 4.1 so I need uh, to program a width of 7.4 so first thing I will, to, uh, will do is actually I will move uh, my starting position and I should be good to go around here and I will zero the dial out will go to my menu I need seven dot four as the second position. So, and we are already good to go. So uh, the depth of the cut is actually more or less a thing of eyeballing in this case. It is not really critical as a dimension for my workpiece. <laughs>
Okay, so as you have seen, I had forgotten to fix the carriage in the beginning. But after fixing that, uh, all the cut went very well and the positions I could reach again and repeatedly and I was able to cut really very near to the um, um, chuck. So everything as expected and uh, I guess that shows the applications of the uh, x-axis control very well.